right, so this game is brought to us by our friend Mandme. Uh, let me just pull up the information. Who is asking the question of how do we lose against a five carry team? I personally have no idea how we could have played better. What, am I looking at the wrong game deck? No, okay. <laughs> Scare myself, I didn't remember seeing a troll and did a buff. Um, how do we lose against a five carry team? Uh, he doesn't see how he could have played better. Uh, he doesn't say his MMR, but um, that doesn't really matter too much. It's probably a normal skill match game, which means it's below 2500 MMR about. Uh, so we need to look at the draft too much. We know kind of what it's going to be. So while we're going through this... Oh, sorry about that. So let's discuss a few things while this while this is going on. What what makes a team? What what defines a carry and what defines a support? Uh, a carry is someone who generally will have less of a laning. Oh shit! There we go. A carry is generally someone who's going to have less of a laning presence. Uh, and they require farm, and they scale well with farm. While a support is someone who has more of an early game presence, uh, what I mean by an early game presence is they have stuns, they have nukes, they have some capacity to zone, they've got things like that going on for them. Um, while, uh, and they don't scale as well with farm. They just kind of need some levels, and then they can get kills, help your carry uh, get kills, stuff like that. Uh, while a carry generally scales with their right-clicking, and needs some degree of farm, and their laning usually isn't as strong. Um, so, what makes an all carry team bad, and what won't necessarily apply at low levels, is um, when you have too many carries. Keep in mind they need, they ideally need uh, items and farm to scale. Is that there's not enough farm on the map for five carries. So, like an OD needs farm, a Slark needs farm, a Lycan needs farm, a Troll needs farm. The Abaddon is supporting, so they weren't a 5 carry team, they were a 4. But like, all these heroes need farm. Uh, so they're going to be dividing their farm among 4 people, while this team is going to ideally be dividing it by like 2 and a half to an extent, because the Axe is going to need a blink, but really doesn't need that much farm to begin with. So, while the Sniper and the... While the Sniper and the, um... PA will have the Dire side of the farm split in half, they're dividing it by 4. So conceptually, assuming the game is equal, the Sniper and the PA should be 6-slotted when all these guys are 3-slotted. And that doesn't mean that they're twice as strong. They're probably, like, the two heroes combined, when these heroes all have, like, 3 items and they have 6 items, they can easily kill all five, all 4 of them very, very easily, because of how item scaling works. Like, if you have a, a Satanic, a Basher, and a... Or, sorry, a Satanic, an Abyssal, uh, an MKB... A BKB, uh, I think I said Satanic already, uh, and like an AC or something on this hero, you're going to be able to kill their entire team kind of effortlessly. The troll won't be able to fight you because you'll bash and kill him. He won't be able to hit you because you probably won't have an MKB yet. Like, you'll be able to go to town on all of them. The only person who might hurt you is this guy with his ult. That's how far ahead that PA would be. And that's if your BKB is down. Um. But, like, if you're not utilizing your farm, that mitigates that advantage. And then if you lose your early game, then, like, them not having a laning presence on their supports, who, which should make their... Why is this thing freaking out? Uh, them not having a laning presence on their supports, if it doesn't matter because you're not zoning this guy out properly, he's not controlling the wave, so he ends up getting full experience, full everything, then it's like you didn't have that advantage of having better laning supports because he's not being punished properly. And, um... The same thing goes here, like... Well, they, they have people down here. But, like, this sh this lane should probably... Eh. Like, it's not that imbalanced, actually. Because he can go f into goddamn range for him. But, um... Like, you should... Conceptually, if you have a more early game team, then you should win your laning phase, you should win your mid game while they're not online. Like, that's how it's supposed to work. Because he's, like, jungling. So, let's look at specifically what you're doing. This is partially on your PA for not controlling the wave, but let, let's let's back it up. Sorry, I wasn't paying that much attention. Because we want to see, like, overall, like, what made your team lose and what made you lose. Uh, so in, like, super low-level games, 
like you can just pick a carry every time and it won't really matter because people aren't using all the farm on the map and um and the game is usually goes super late so you'll eventually get some degree of items like if you just go a carry and pick them and get a minus every game like you'll eventually get six slotted and you'll probably win because of that so well, let's see how the laning phase like broke down the beginning because we want to see what you as an individual could have done to like kind of make your lanes easier because while we can't control for like everyone else like we discussed generally why an all carolina isn't necessarily bad at low levels like if you play at like four or five kmmr then there's not gonna be enough space for these people the early game heroes are gonna get kills they're gonna secure their lanes better like everything should go marginally better uh you shouldn't be right here you should be over here and zoning him. And as soon as this guy's here, you just throw up your Q and you start harassing him immediately. There's no reason to delay this. You want to be somewhere outside of aggro, which would be like in this area, where you're not going to fuck with the creep wave, and harassing him. It's good that you're trying to deny the creeps, but he got some back here. So he's already getting experience. Like, the Slark, Slark is a really, really weak laner. And if you were here from the beginning, you would have been able to zone him out more. Like, you need to be here from the beginning, and just harassing him with your, um, uh, arctic burn. So I think, I think he inadvertently aggroed it back. Yeah, he, like, tries to attack you and pulls the creep wave back. I, he probably didn't even do it on purpose, but it, it helped him out a little bit. Because it, like, screwed up your lane, because uh, his range creep dies before yours. So it's going to naturally push the lane back. And, like, you don't want to go super late game against them. As some other people said, they are right. Like, if you go super, super late game... Uh, so to comment on that, actually, we're going to stop for a second again. Uh, you don't want to go super, super late game against them. But, like, when you have four carries like that, their super, super late game isn't, like, 50 minutes. Their super late game is, like, 70, 80 minutes because of how slowly they're going to farm. Uh, once again, that's, like, more when everyone's kind of playing almost how they should. Since they're not, it's like, this game's probably going to revolve around a lot of kills. Like, the kills are going to benefit them, because there's not enough creeps for them to farm in the map as four. But, like, if everyone keeps fighting and you keep dying to them, that's really bad. So you're not zoning this guy out properly. Which goes back to us saying, like, if you have a support and you're not zoning, then, like, or you're not getting kills and you're not zoning properly, then, then what? That was poor positioning. Okay, that was terrible. So... Against a weak laner like him, you want to keep your lane at a certain position, like right here, to make him have to walk up. I want to make this a free camera. This picture's in my way. Can't see it, though. So you want to ideally keep your lane in this area. When you do an AoE nuke, like your your thing, it should only really be to get a kill. You can't use that to harass. This is really annoying. I wish I knew how to turn off these alerts. When you use that nuke... And you did it again. You weren't even going to kill him with that. So you um, push the lane all the way up to here. So now he can come back here once he's done salving and get experience. And now he's getting like a huge wave. Because since there's three range creeps here. Well now there's two. But like that thing's going to die very quickly. That one's dead. Now he's getting five creeps coming right towards him. So now he's getting a huge experience advantage over you guys. After this wave is complete. He should already have the experience advantage. Must have been denies or something. Uh... Two denies, three denies. Yeah, it was five denies, so that cost him a bit of experience. Now he gets this wave, gets him all the way to level three. He's skilling like an idiot. You always max Dark Pact on this hero. You never, never, ever max your pounds. It's, it's a noob mistake. The reason you max this is because it lets you farm, and it's on a lower cooldown. A really low cooldown. <laughs> so if you're behind, you max this, and you can go farm the jungle really quickly. So, like, right now, the lane's push, you could have pulled this whole time, too. You can get the lane back. Uh, when it's in this position... Well, not anymore. It okay, so you can, like, pull... Okay, you stacked. Whatever. So when you pull this, it's just going to deny a whole creep wave. So now he's just kind of getting beat up by the Slark. Because, like, now he has a, he's equal levels with him, and he can out-trade... He can out-trade her, particularly since she hasn't leveled Blur yet. Which isn't necessarily wrong. Like, stealing that's okay, particularly if she thinks she'll get a kill. Uh, the blur would just let him her trade with him a little better, but his nukes are still kind of scary. So, 
I know you said, like, oh, he told me to pull and then die. Well, yeah, he's bad. And you didn't zone that guy properly, which is your fault. So if you zoned him properly and you pulled, then it would have been fine. But since you didn't do either, then it wasn't fine. So he's free, like, he's free farming right now, and the Slark isn't here. Try not to steal your carry's EXP. Like, that's a big thing that annoys me, because, like, if I get a lot of EXP on a carry, it means that I can be left alone in a lane and deal with someone. But if you're just sitting here stealing his EXP the whole time, it's not good. You should get your EXP for pulls and kills, pretty much exclusively. Uh, with a few exceptions. Like, if you're zoning, it's okay to sit in EXP range and steal the EXP, because he's getting zero, and then you two are getting half each. But if he's getting all the EXP and you're getting half each, that's pretty bad. So boom, it's like six minutes, the Slark's gonna have level six. He's an extraordinarily weak laner, and you didn't do anything to zone him out, which is on you. And uh, let's let's see how the other lanes are going. Uh, last hits. Lycan's killing it in the jungle. Your team's getting some farm, and like, that's, that's going okay. This is going terrible. That's going kind of well. But ideally, you want, you want like this lane down here to be getting kills. This lane should be getting kills. The mid lane should be favoring the uh, sniper. Particularly since there's like no rotations, the sniper should just have a field day with him. Because he shouldn't ever get hit by the uh, by the bubble to throw him away and take his int. So the OD should struggle a little bit. And he is. It's twice the CS for the sniper. <sighs> Let's go a little quicker. Let's see what happens. So you guys get two kills in bottom lane. There's a jungle and someone from bottom lane, so that's good. Yeah, you guys are taking a little bit of advantage, but like I noticed, just by looking at Dota buff quickly, you guys took like a small advantage in the beginning and then lost it and like never got it back. You know, if you were to if you were to stack, if like you can't do anything in lane, you can be stacking. And, like, your axe might just wander over there and kill it. Like, he's probably a bad player, but if he ever wanders in the jungle, he'll be able to kill that. Just make his blink dagger come a little quicker. He's rushing a blade mail like an idiot. You can get a vanguard, depending on your lane, or you can get a, um, straight blink, depending on what you think is good, but this is stupid. The vanguard lets him tank the wave and play more aggressively. The blink lets him do aggressive calls. You can get a kill on this guy. He can gank here. Uh, so this is also on your axe. If he had a blink instead of whatever he's doing here, he would have been doing a lot better. Once again, this is pushing out. And you, you're nuking the wave. Like, he's a level 6 Slark. You can't harass this guy anymore. He's level 6. Your harass means nothing. Is he still maxing Pounce? Yeah, maxes Pounce. So he's getting... The Slark is getting everything he needs to get from this offline. He's got 20 creeps, 10 minutes. He's got level, He's got levels. And he's screwing with this PA to an extent. Well, she's got 50 creeps. That's pretty good. So we'll, we'll pause after the laning phase is over, and we'll see how everything went. PA died again, and we died down here. Oh, your sniper died. I didn't see how he died. It doesn't matter. So it's ten minutes in. Let's pause and let's like do a screenshot and let's see how everything's how everything's looking. We have this guy did nothing in the jungle. He's kind of like chilling. He's happy. He's got 54 creeps. Died one. Twice, wow, well, dead twice. Most farm in the game. So he's probably pretty happy. If they were ahead in gold right now, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, okay, it's just about even. Um, but that's because your mid lane and your top lane went how they should have, to an extent. Like, it went how they should have. Like, mid lane went how it should have because the sniper destroyed the, um, the OD, which was great. Top lane, your PA got farmed, but died two times, so a solo offlane Slark. The Slark should have, like, no levels, no farm, anything right now. He should be maybe, like, level, like, four if, some, like, some weird shit happened. But he should not be having a good game. This guy should be getting destroyed. So this lane went as better than they could have hoped for. Like, significantly better. So this is probably where your issue is going to stem from. Of this Slark getting way too much from top, and then having way too much of a mid-game presence, and then kicking the shit out of you. This lane, ideally they should have gotten more kills, like, uh, he gets a good call into a purification, and that should be a kill on definitely the troll, troll's a low HP hero, and maybe the Abaddon. Like, the Abaddon makes it a little harder, but y you should still be able to get some kills, but he's just playing poorly, so it's not much you can do about that. 
So like in, in this game, like if I'm if I'm the radiant team, I'm really happy with how this went. Like really, really happy. My Slark is doing ten times better than he should have. Mid went about as you expected. The OD only died once, got twenty CS. It's it's pretty shitty. The mid the mid definitely went worse than I wanted it to, but about as well as I probably should have expect expected. And this lane went great. They didn't get as much kills as they wanted. The uh the troll got some pretty reasonable farm, he's at thirty three creeps at ten minutes. And you didn't get kills. Which is which is really, really good for them. So like ten minutes, kills are even, I'm happy as the radiant team. You guys should be sad. The onus is on you to punish their shit team. So as a support, what you wanna do is you get him like a lane ward. What is he getting? Just treads, I guess. Uh, you get like a lane ward for him, and you get a sentry, and you just basically leave him alone. And the only time you come up here is to kill this guy. And you need an axe with a blink dagger to do that. Or to get really lucky. They rotate. Okay, yeah. Shouldn't have gotten a killer. Cool. You're even gonna get a return killer. It's really nice. Oh! Oh, oh, so big. So big. Oh, I don't know which team that's looking at. That was pretty funny. Good on that RD. So they're, they're trading like evenly with kills right now, which definitely benefits them, not you. Because you need to get like clean initiations, clean kills into like objectives and punish them not... They're, they shouldn't be able to contest you right now. So you have like repel, you should have an axe, blink initiation at this time, but you don't. And as a support, you should kinda you should you should be with the the axe and the uh, Omni Knight pretty much at all times. And then have a TP to help people. So like you get a ward here, this lets your PA farm a little bit. Um, you get aggressive wards in their woods, so when they're trying to farm the air the precious areas they have to farm, you get kills. <sighs> Okay, what the fuck did that PA just do? It's like, you guys are grouping like a little too much right now. And, like you're diving towers when you, you probably don't really want to be. Because, um... You should be able to cleanly get stuff with the... Like, once again, it's, it's like this axe being kind of stupid to an extent. But like, you playing this wrong also made it a problem. Uh, I'm assuming this probably wasn't a 5 stack. Uh, you didn't say it one way or the other. If it's a group, then it's your team playing poorly and not communing properly. If it's solo, you can't do too much about it. But like, if you played your lane better and that Slark had nothing, then life would have been great. The Slark is 4-0-2 right now out of the offline. It's not allowed. Gotta punish people better for shit like that. Okay, that's a graphical bug. I was like, when's this guy coming out? Yeah, you guys are just losing fights now. Oh, I guess we should break down how that, why that went so badly too. Let's see how this breaks out. So you guys are trying to siege this. That's okay. You don't have an axe initiation, so this is kind of scary to an extent. He gets a Midas. What a, what a thug. See, carry goes off lane, gets a Midas. You lose the game because he never gets shut down properly. This sniper is out of position, it's not being protected. That he needed to be repelled there, or you couldn't be up. You have this guy who makes everyone more survivable, which helps their team. Like gives them some cushion when dumb shit's happening. But you guys have two nukes, these are two super high one right heroes too, because they have such great heals. That was just like poor positioning, bad fight, shouldn't have been taken. And the PA should have still been farming. I don't know where her item build was terrible too. Sniper's item build's fine. They don't really have a way to jump him. They could try and run him down with a lichen, but um, to an extent you should be able to protect him when that tries to happen. Sorry if this seems like I'm lacking focus. You asked like two questions, and depending on whether or not this was a team game or not, it kind of has different answers. Like, we already went over kind of why you're losing it. Nice, you killed the Slark. You guys are sticking around here way too much. You should take objectives and like back up because once you you took this fight and took mid tower, which is great, it opens up the map. 
We take a fight, you got GA up. You're gonna get a kill on this guy, which is great. You take this tower. You're low, he's low, no mana. Uh, she's half HP, which isn't good, because their team has some pretty significant nukes. She keeps dying. You can't. Just take your objectives and leave. Like, you don't want to overcommit on stuff. It's really, really bad to do that. And you guys... Yeah, so he's gonna die to wolves. Yeah, he needed to leave sooner too. Everyone just needs to fucking leave. Like, you shouldn't give people return kills for no no reason. It's really stupid. Is he actually gonna... I don't think he'll get a kill here. Yeah, he's fine. Like, you're giving them return kills. You need to cleanly take objectives with their weak team, and then, like, back up and, like, farm again. And then you can repeat that. You just can't overstay your welcome at, like, low HP for no reason. Is he gonna die? These wolves don't seriously. Okay, okay. I was scared. I was scared for you for a minute there. Uh, I can't tell. You guys still don't have vision up. Like, one of your advantages should be, like, no one on their team is really gonna want to buy wards. Um, you don't have vision up, which means your carries can't safely farm, and you don't have vision up, which means you don't know where they are, so you can play aggressively successfully. Yeah, that blade mail pickup is still haunting you guys. Yeah, it's such a cleaner mid game if that guy had a goddamn blink. So that was great. And like you want to use this time when you take like a big fight like this. Well, you're dead, but um, hypothetically you were alive still, or if the Omni Knight had wards, which he doesn't. You get a ward here, get a ward here, and what that tells you is when people are farming this camp, when people are rotating to like get shit up, people are farming this camp, when people are farming that camp, people are in this area. And you can use that to just run like here, get a kill, get a kill, and just own their jungle. Because they, they should be pretty scared right now, and they're they're not scared enough. Um, which is partially because your axe just now gets a blink dagger at like 20 minutes when you could have had it at like 12, oh, or even sooner. <sighs> Sark has a shadow blade now, which means your life's gonna be shitty. Let's see what you're doing. Someone with your team, and that's good. Like, you wanna be with the axe, but like, this sniper and this, um, PA need to be farming more. And, like, not just dicking around. Cause it's 20 minutes in. And the only person with more than five creeps a minute is someone on their team. The team that's supposed to be splitting farm among a ton of people. And you guys just don't have enough. And like, you need to have Roche warded too. Oh, you do have it warded. I don't know if they smoke. Do they smoke them? Like, they do it kind of quickly too, so. No, I'm just wondering. Well, I guess you're trading in for this, so that's not the end of the world. Don't ch You guys are chasing too much. You need to get back into this lane and start taking objectives, because you know right now that he went into Roche to pay attention. And PA wandered... Uh, this is stupid. You took like a big fight here and you're not taking an objective, and you're losing this objective. Instead you guys split up and farm. Killed three of them, two were missing. You could have taken this tower, you chose to like do dumb stuff. So you're losing objectives for no reason. Your team can also rush on pretty easily. Uh, PA can tank it, sniper can click it. You just get ward vision and you do it. He's still not getting a blink, oh my god. Yeah, this is your, your axe playing like a fool. Yeah, see, oh, oh, front line. Beautiful, beautiful thing. So, I what they're gonna build where Dyer's top that's weird. The Dota buff graph lied to me. Actually, yeah, I guess it was an experience graph. So they're they're benefiting heavily in experience from this because they have um they have heroes that need lots of experience and uh and uh so they've been getting more farm on the map. They've been like splitting up more and they've been getting like is it bigger kills? Well, they've been killing the PA and they have a Midas, which is also helping them like keep on far on, on par with like the farm and the experience and everything. So they're they're really ahead in experience right now, which means fighting for you is more annoying too, because they're gonna have more skills and more like abilities to use to screw with you. So I guess the gold wasn't too bad. I only saw the experience graph on Dota buff. Uh, See, so yeah, you should be grouping with the axe. 
wherever his stupid ass is, just now farming the woods. I'm like, you have to be, like, you should be, as a team, right now, you should be living in their woods. Like, you, Axe, and um, Omni Knight, if you get, like, wards up here to play safe, you gotta get sentries and obs, because... You need to know when the Slark's gonna initiate on you, because they have they've got that invis. This guy's gonna build invis too. Yeah, got, they got a bunch of invis. You get like sentries and obs here, dominate their jungle, and you farm their woods as like a group. While your carries get to farm here, and like you can get like an ob sentry here, or actually here's probably a better spot, or up here, and that would tell your carries if they're paying attention. Obviously, you know you gotta give them the information, and hopefully they use it. Um, they'll see the Slark. Or the troll coming to try and kill them, like what running in, and this will let you farm it safely while limiting their farm. Because right now you're still kind of scary. Like they'd have to move as five to come deal with you, and if you have obs and sentries, you just back away. If you see them move as five to try and come kill the three of you in their woods, then you back away, and you're limiting these three camps from them, and probably even this fourth one. And then you can keep this wave push too. So maybe they can have some farming here. You might be able to get a kill on them if you have correct vision or you know where their other heroes are. You can go for something bold like that. Because like a blink... Oh, he does have a blink. I, I either didn't notice or he just picked that up. Um, like blink purification will kill... It'll kill this guy. He's got a lot of HP now actually because of that, that, that Sanj. Before I had the Sanj, I would have killed him. Uh, if he's in a creep wave, it'll kill him. Um, you know, I'll even say, you can, if, if you get a blink call on someone, you, you can definitely kill him. You might need to blow your ult depending on the hero, but you can definitely get kills. And that's not a horrible thing to blow. It's like, what, 100 seconds? Yeah, it's about 100 seconds on that. Purification, whatever. Like, you, you can apply plenty of, plenty of pressure. And this guy, this guy should just die from, like, a blink call into purification. Like, you have your Q to help with that shit, too, and, and like, this nuke. Like you, you should pretty easily be able to get individual picks here very, very quickly, if your hero is three. And that's limiting their farm. Because then their farm is only like, oh, whatever I can get over to here, what I can get mid, and like th this camp, maybe that camp. Or they have to move as five to deal with you. And then you just have to make sure when they move as five to deal with you that you don't get caught and you just back up. Which creates space for your cores to get more farm. And then once they have like their huge items, then you're in, you're, you're in good shape. Then you want to take an objective. You want to take like Roshan when you feel you can. And um, then take towers and stuff. Because they have no real great answer apart from invis initiation on how to stop you from camping their woods, and that's not a, that's not a great answer. Because like invis initiation will just get you killed if you have detection. Like if you guys have a sentry ops combo and a slark or a troll warlord walk up here by themselves, or you see them like run in like that, you can probably get a kill there, or you can just back up if you see more than that. Because you have to punish like this shadow blade makes me invincible mentality. So this is a problem, this PA needs a... Okay, she's got a BKB, so this Silver Edge won't really help him that much. That'd be kind of annoying. See how the spike gets taken. I mean, it's an it's an Abaddon. You you very rarely want to start a fight on an Abaddon. That is, like, it might work out, but that guy's really hard to kill. You blow two huge disables on that guy. The BKB, she man fights him. That's good. That's good. This fight's going pretty well. Oh wait, then he died. Yeah, the troll just invis sneaks up on him and he gets fucking ruined. You were busy saving yourself. Where are you even saving yourself from? And you want to do that so it hits multiple people. You could have saved that. That guy was probably dead. Yeah, you take some Slark damage. Okay. It's always unreasonable to do that on yourself. You should also get a Glimmer Cape. Glimmer cape on this hero is great because if you um, if you cold embrace someone and put a glimmer cape on them, they basically can't die for four seconds because they get like super high resistance of like 70% and they're immune to physical damage. Against Slark, he's gonna get some essence stacks, but at least your hero is not dead. It might draw, it might give you time for your heroes to do stuff. So that fight went horribly. Your sniper died. Your PA got raped. All for like all because you initiate on Abaddon. This hero is fucking not worth killing. He has 
Probably the lowest net worth in the game. Second lowest next to you. He's super hard to kill. You have no no way to nuke him. Like you can you can kill an Abaddon if you can nuke past his threshold, if that makes sense. So yeah, at four hundred and fifty damage or, four, or when he gets below like four hundred um, HP, his ult triggers automatically, right? Four hundred? Yeah, it's four hundred. So if you have a nuke that does like over four hundred damage before he hits that threshold, so if you have like a Dagon five, uh, which does six hundred damage after reduction, and you hit him with that when he's only at five hundred HP, it'll straight kill him before he can um before it's ult procs. It won't proc. It only procs once you get below the threshold. Not if you go from like above it to zero health in that time frame. You don't really have any means to do that. Everything will be like some sort of incremental damage unless you get like a god tier lucky crit on her. So your PA, your PA is playing like fucking terrible. But like you, you got daggers on him, which is fine. You can harass him and then you just back up, farm, do whatever. Take this patiently, wait for a big call. Instead you guys call onto, you single call onto this guy and then you follow up with like a wyvern ult. And you killed an Abaddon in exchange for four of your heroes. Against their lineup, that sucks. And you're grouping for this guy's ult too, which is, which is not fun. And you guys, you didn't have sentries down either, so that, that troll was able to invis run up on your sniper and kill him. Like, if the sniper saw him, the sniper could have, like, backed up, repositioned, ran near you, did, did something. Like, something could have been done. But he didn't have any idea that he got ran up on by a troll. And this troll, who's, like, really under farmed, like, he's not doing too great, was able to just kill him. Because he gets the initiation with the shadow blade, starts building his stack, and kills the guy super quick. So at this point, you guys are definitely, definitely in trouble. Yeah, they've, ta they've taken a gold lead, and their experience lead has been there. And this Slark, once again, this Slark should have had a shitty lane, because Wyvern's annoying to get zoned against. Like, I've had games where a good Wyvern has zoned me perfectly on, like, heroes with way more of a lane presence than this fucking guy. And he got way too much out of lane, which is partly your PA playing bad, but, like, it's on you to not nuke the wave and help him control the wave while zoning that guy. If you're the better player, you're the X-Factor in your games. You should be the one making the difference that actually matters. Yeah. And now they're farming their whole map. What's your sniper? Do, do I really even care what these carriers are doing? Probably not. The sniper should be farming your woods right now. This axe already had these ancient stuff. There's nothing for him to do here. What's your PA doing? Your PA, like, you guys are just dicking around the middle. It's been like a minute. You guys just sitting here. Finally people go to farm? Okay, there we go. He has no item progression. He's dirt poor and he's in terrible shape. He's one of the lowest net worths in the game as one of your carries. Which is partially you not securing the lane for him properly, and the other half him being bad. But yeah, this game is this game is rough, you know. You carry dies again. Long fights are pretty good for them too, I think. That was weird. You should always buy treads on this hero, by the way. Definitely buy treads. You should tread and like stat stack early on. This build is terrible. Yeah, that's just like now you guys are at a disadvantage. And your heroes still aren't farming. Like, if we look, the high, two highest net worths are on their team. One should be your sniper and your PA, like, topping the boards. This axe screwed up the early game, and you screwed up this line. The axe not in the blink screwed up your ability to play this. So, uh, I think I'm just gonna cut this one short. I don't really think there's a reason to watch, like, 50 minutes of, like, more dumb stuff. Like, I already know what's gonna happen. Your heroes are not gonna get farmed. I know the sniper gets a bunch of kills in this game, but the PA remains completely poor. I think she ends the game with, like, a basher or something. She never has farm. The sniper's the only one who's six slot, but you have, like, four guys on their team that are, like, four or five slotted. It doesn't, which doesn't, doesn't equate when your PA is dirt poor. Your axe screwed up the early game by not getting a blink and not dominating that lane enough, which is a combination of how him and the Omni paired together. Uh, like I said, it wouldn't have been the easiest lane for them to get kills in, but like as soon as someone gets out of position, they should be able to get a lot of her ass and maybe even a kill in that lane. Uh, and he could have gotten the Vanguard to even step up the pressure, which would have been fine, or like a blink. I think a blink would have been good because a blink lets him destroy every lane. 
Like you can focus on how he could have killed this lane more, but getting a blink means he blink calls on the OD. The sniper kills with a, with a headshot ult, or just starts autoing and kills him. He comes top, he kills the Slark, who's playing way too aggressively, like way too much up here. Uh, so that that would have been a lot better. Uh, I mean, this if, if you know the guy, you could try and communicate. Uh, or sorry, if you know the guy, you should be able to communicate that. If you don't know them, and this is purely a pub game, then um, you should try and just communicate. Say, hey man, you really need a blink dagger, and like, you know, let's go get killed. It's like, let's fuck shit up, you know. Just try and be nice, try and give like advice without ordering people around, and hopefully they'll, they'll listen because they want to win Dota. But um, at, least at lower MR games, having five carries is really not going to be the worst thing because a bad play like this, where you didn't zone the Slark properly, and the Slark is like dominating this game right now. 7, 3, and 8. 88, his farm blows. Terrible Slark. But he has the highest net worth because he bought a Midas, and the game just dragged out, which benefits them. So, like, if teams play better, then you should win more games. Uh, you should have, sorry, if teams play better, you should win more games if you have a better lineup. And their lineup is definitely terrible. But when you don't play your lineup correctly, and you feed unnecessarily like this PA has all game, and you don't hit creeps that, that no one really has this game, then that's a problem. Okay, there. Let's, let's pause this shit. So right now, you guys got some pickoffs, which is excellent. You're pushing this tower. How are you? You need to scream to start getting back right now. They have five heroes up. The OD ult is up, which you should know if you're paying attention. There's an objective to take here. You can back up, kill Roshan, get that on your PA or your sniper or whatever. And, like, maybe you'll win a fight. You're going to overstay your welcome here right now, and I can almost guarantee this is going to result in you getting team wiped. It, this, this is a game losing decision. Because they're going to have five people up, and you guys show no sign of backing up right now. The only way they lose this is if he hits a terrible ult, or if you guys have sentries down. And you see the Shadow Blade initiation <laughs> onto your sniper. And we'll even slow it down because we'll see how this goes. I imagine I'm probably right about how this goes down. You can't initiate on this guy. Your axe is also way too far forward. The axe needs to be counter initiating. They go on the axe. This is OD. You got an ult opportunity, dog. That's a pretty big ult. Took all of you to half HP. He dies. Can't kill him. Sniper is booking it. Yeah, got destroyed. <laughs> that was a really greedy move there. What's he doing? Just pounce him. Pounce him and pack this shit. There we go. Alright. That's a kill, and Sniper escapes. So sticking this out was terrible. Like I said, the OD got a huge ult. You stuck around way too long. You can come, you can even chip this tower if you really, really want, and you think you have the time to maybe kill the tower, go for it. But even if you think you had the time and it turns out you didn't, don't be scared to just back up. You can back up, you can farm, you can back up and go to Roche, prevent them from getting Roche. Roche helps their lineup so fucking much because it gives them all gold that they all need. Um... And it's going to give one of them an Aegis to go do something stupid. Like, a Troll Warlord with an Aegis is super annoying for you. Lycan, Lycan's like the worst Aegis carrier on their team, probably. So he shouldn't be taking it, but I imagine he will every time, because he's going to be the hero who does Roshan. It's not bad to have it, it's just other heroes benefit more. So this is like another like huge blunder. You lost your PA again. Sniper nearly died. You fed them more kills. Catastrophically far behind. Like that's game losing stuff generally. And did we try and rush here? You looked at it and then just locked away. They smoke it and do it. I guess you couldn't have known this. It's gonna happen really quickly. Because of their heroes. <coughs> um, yeah, what are you doing? You get a blink here. A blink is really good. That should be your next item. You could sell your... Okay, another thing is a pet peeve of mine. Uh, if you ever need to hold items, and it's not something you're doing right now, just I thought of it because this is a situation. If you ever need, like, sentries, dust, or whatever, sell your fucking wand. I don't care 
I see people hold like parts of their agonims, like they'll have the three parts of the agonims need the fourth, and they're like, I can't hold dust, man. I'm like, my slots are full. And they have like an ogre club, a fucking staff of wizardry, and a point booster. And it's like, dude, you can hold it, drop one of those. They're not all necessary. You have to carry one of them, two of them if you can, but if you don't have the slots, you don't have the slots. You need to drop one of those because having the utility items that your team needs is vastly more important. More important. Yeah, he takes it. It's fucking stupid. Now he has an MKB. Your PA is like even more fucked because she's so incredibly far oh, behind. Sniper's the only real one who can, like, do damage at this point. Who gets ruined here? Yeah, just slaughtered. Just, what the fuck? I thought BKB was up. It must have been a graphical thing. Yeah, and they have a Lycan. They push super hard. You'd probably get Raxed here. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh yeah, your nukes are really annoying, though. So the reason you want the blink is because it allows you to stay back and get... Okay, you get a force staff. Like, force staff isn't bad, but it's definitely not as good. The blink lets you sit... I really hate that it does this. The blink lets you sit, like, back here, back here. Like, run forward, blink, and get, like, a huge ult off. And that ult is, like, a game-changing thing. And you're not going to be able to get a good one off. You guys get destroyed here again. Oh, it's shit on. Yeah, so this game's basically over at that point, so we'll just do a summary from here. I'm not going to bother watching the rest of it. It's not going to matter. Um, so, quick summary. The zoning here was terrible. You used your nuke to, like, try and harass, and your nuke hits every goddamn creep. So you automatically push away by doing that. You need to zone here in the beginning. Like, you stand here, use your um, Arctic Burn, or if you're another hero, use whatever range sk skills you have, let, slash your range to harass this hero, and make that Slark think twice about walking up. You didn't, he got free farm, ended up getting like a 12 minute minus or something, and then the Slark just did not get shut down the way he asked him that way. So I Slark is a terrible offliner. Pounce is not a good enough escape, and it's there's nothing else to keep you in that lane. Um... So your PA sucked too, which was a problem, but like, I'm talking about things you specifically could have done. That was on you. In the mid-game, you should have been trying to communicate with the Axe, regardless of whether the Blink Dagger thing, we'll just ignore that, we'll focus on things you can do. You should have gotten words up and told your Axe and your um, and your Omni to sit with you in here and then go for kills. Because even if he doesn't have a Blink, like, these players are probably bad too. Yellow people will walk up, particularly when they have their Shadow Blades. Like, they'll walk right up to you with a Shadow Blade, not thinking you can see them. You have an ob sentry combo here, you're farming this camp, you see him walk up, Axe wanders over, Axe calls him, that guy's dead. Like, you need to sit here and play super aggressive, because they had no way to really contest that if you get ob sentry combos in these areas. And then, like, you, Omni, and, um, and the Axe just farm out their jungle. As a support, it's totally fine to farm. And that, that's creating huge space for them. And like I said, if they come to try and contest you as five, your OBS and your sentry should give you that information, you back away. Waste their time, create space for your carries. Um, you guys took this fight, that was the game losing fight, where you were sat here for way too long as people were respawning. You didn't have a sentry down, you couldn't see the invis initiations, you got huge ulted by this guy. That's the game right there. But, um... But yeah, so that's about it. Um, if you have any more specific questions, feel free to ask. If you have a super low MMR bracket, just pick a carry. It, it doesn't really matter. The whole, ca oh, five carries versus, like, how are they winning with five carries? Well, it's because it's a low-level game, and people don't punish you having picked all carries. That's what this was. That was you guys not punishing it, this lane not getting enough, that lane went in your favor, but wasn't enough. That's the game in a nutshell. But, um, cool. Any any feedback, appreciate it. I hope the video helped, and um, best of luck in your future games, dude.